Okay, here we go. Welcome Cal Discoveries travelers and friends to another in-depth conversation with one of our esteemed lecturers, which will appear in our Cal Discoveries Travel Enrichment Lecture Series on our website. I'm Nancy McNeil, Assistant Director of Cal Discoveries Travel. Today, I'm delighted to be interviewing Dr. Nadison Permal, known to most as NAD, who once had a student say, Professor Permal is one of those grand old wise men who come around in your life maybe once or twice and leaves an indelible mark on your soul. He is very well liked and respected on our campus. Dr. Permal received his BA, MA, and PhD from the University of California, Berkeley in political science. He has been a lecturer in three departments at Berkeley, rhetoric, sociology, and political science for almost 27 years. He retired after more than 33 years as an administrator at Cal, his last position being the director of the Associated Students of the University of California, otherwise known as the ASUC. A past president of the Cal Alumni Association from 2003 to 2005. Dr. Permal has been a lecturer for Cal Discoveries Travel since 2001 on 19 of our trips. It is a pleasure to speak with NAD today, and I'm going to get right to our questions, NAD. Welcome. Thank you. What has been your association with Cal and or the Cal Alumni Association? Well, I've been on the Berkeley campus since Moses. Uh, I <laughs> I have been here now 53 years, coming as a freshman from Southern California in 1967, having never visited the Berkeley campus, but taking the recommendation of my oldest brother, who was 10 years older and had graduated from UCLA, that Berkeley and Stanford were the two prestige campuses in the state, and I should pick one of those. And fortunately, I picked the right one. Yay. Sight unseen. I love it. Well, the time I've spent at Berkeley opened up wonderful doors and windows. Walking through Sather Gate is like walking through a portal, sort of like Dorothy did when she walked through the door to the land of Oz. It, it opens up a whole world of color and opportunity and knowledge. And for me, it was life changing. Um, it's made my entire life possible, I should say. Everything from my career to meeting the woman that I married for 40 years now, and our son, who was also a graduate from Cal. So Berkeley has been deeply rooted in my life. Wow, well, thank you for that. I, I know that that's the case, but I'm glad that our travelers now know the long history and how much Cal means to you. What is your philosophy about the role of an enrichment lecturer, Nad? Well, my perspective on being an enrichment lecturer is to share with travelers something that is completely unexpected or something that they may not have encountered previously. I don't want to give them simply a tour of where we're visiting. They're gonna get all that enrichment from people provided by the trip and on their tours of the locales. Instead, I want to offer them something from the history of the location that we're going or related to it, which I think they will find engaging and will want to cross-examine me about. Excellent. Well, thanks for mentioning that. For those travelers watching that have not been on any of our trips, you did mention that you uh, lecture in addition to the educational material provided by our tour directors and local guides and lectures. And so that's what makes Cal Discoveries Travel uh, sets us apart actually is the professors that serve as our enrichment lecturers provide this information that you cannot get anywhere else and actually supplements and makes the educational component stronger. So thanks for adding that bit there. What was your favorite trip and why? Well, I've been on, as you noted uh, to me, 19 of the Cal Adventure trips I feel incredibly humble and honored that I was even involved in taking um, these trips and offering my job 
to both host them and to be a lecturer. Um, I would say that my first trip was one of the most exciting. It was a family trip to the Galapagos Islands. Mm. And I would recommend to travelers that sometime in their lifetime, they visit the incredible Galapagos Islands. Um, the trip to the Canadian Rockies, which was another family trip that went off the way across Canada. And I saw some of the most spectacular scenery and participated in activities that I otherwise would not have had an opportunity uh, to engage in with my family, whom I took along with me. I, I must say that there were times when I thought that our trip was being filmed in a Disney studio because it looked so incredibly beautiful and unreal that it couldn't possibly be real. And yet all of it was absolutely gorgeous and magnificent. And we ended up in Vancouver and that's one of the most beautiful cities in Canada and went to the Bouchard Gardens. I mean, it was just a magnificent trip. And there was a trip to the Baltic where we left from Germany and sailed around the Baltic, stopping at a, a number of incredible visits. We met Lech Walesa in Poland. We went to St. Petersburg and it was an absolutely wonderful visit to Russian history and seeing the magnificent way in which the Russian government has maintained and restored its historic sites was absolutely thrilling. And ending up in Amsterdam, having gone also to Oslo and other uh, stops along the way. And of course, on a cruise where we were treated like royalty as far as I was concerned. So it was an absolutely fabulous trip. And once again, I took my whole family and we enjoyed it immensely. And I also would say the trip to Normandy in conjunction with the 50th anniversary mm. of the American landing uh, during World War II and visiting all the sites, Mont Saint-Michel, going all the way down to see the Bayou Tapestry, um, seeing the Normandy countryside, and of course, visiting the sacred battlefield um, cemeteries where American soldiers are buried uh, right next to the beach where they landed. All of it was absolutely stirring and magnificent. And um, I'm just, again, grateful that I was included in these trips. And those are only a few of the many that I had the good fortune to be part of. They all seem to have um, distinct memories tied to them, don't they, Nad? I find it difficult to choose just one or even two of the many trips that I've had the privilege of accompanying Cal Travelers on as well. And interesting that you mentioned Disneyland because many times on my trips, I've, I've thought the same thing about the scenery and the places that, that we have seen and visited. And you probably know the photo that's behind me. Uh, that's going to be seen on the Elbe River trip that you'll be talking about, or at least we'll be mentioning at the end of the trip. And I don't know, when I got this photo, I thought, wow, that looks like another Disneyland uh, photo right there. So beauty is all around us. Absolutely. You, you spoke a little bit about your philosophy, about your role as an enrichment lecturer. How do you decide what topics you'll talk about in your lectures and discussions? Well, my goal is to offer the unexpected. And since I love history so much, what I attempt to do is to purview our trip and then think about what would be engaging or surprising to our travelers, something that they may not have otherwise encountered previously and yet would elucidate and broaden their perspective. And I'll mention that on our trip to El on the Elba trip as well at the end. But I can give you some examples if you'd like. Okay. The ways in which I've for example, how the American Revolution led to the French Revolution. I gave that presentation on the trip to Normandy because certainly the French Revolution is a part of French history. We were in France, but how did that revolution 
come about as a result of the American Revolution. And I think that the travelers were surprised when I made that connection through the historical record. Another was how the American Western is connected to the story of race in America. Mm -hmm. We did the trip that went through the um, national parks of the West. Um, I did a presentation on the origins of the American Western and how that story is connected to the story of race in America. Again, something I don't think the travelers expected to hear and something that I hope that they took away a new and different version and vision of American history. And then another, why fi uh, failing to understand monarchy has led to the dysfunction in American constitutional structure and government. And I gave that lecture on the trip around the Baltic since we were going to countries which had all had monarchies previously. And you know, I think most Americans think, oh, monarchy, that's that old fashioned stuff from Europe. That's the reason we fought the revolution to get rid of those people. But um, I think that as the musical Hamilton has suggested, complexity is rife throughout history. And I was able to suggest to the travelers that the American constitutional structure actually began with some flaws of our understanding and the value of the role of monarchy in governments, which still exists in many European and some Asian countries. Wow. Yeah, so there's a lot of preparation that goes into um, deciding your topics and exactly what you will be talking about. But I think our travelers will find it very interesting that your theme is the unexpected educational component of the places that you're visiting. And that makes just for another um, strong educational component. I hope so. <laughs> I think so. I know so. Uh, so then what type of formats, Nad, do you find most effective for your talks? Well, the last thing I want to do is stand in front of an audience for an hour and ramble on. Uh, I should provide pillows if I was going to do that <laughs> because uh, I, am, I am not the greatest speaker in the world. So I always provide a PowerPoint presentation which has both written material and lots of pictures to connect the subject matter to what I'm speaking about. And occasionally I even have music within the PowerPoints that comes with it. And I play some music sometimes even before or at the conclusion. And my goal is, I'm a, a visual learner as well as an audio, audio, audible learner. And so I want to make sure that I give them something that is not just the words from my mouth that they hear, but also representations, examples, in pictures of various historical and contemporary materials that will help to solidify what I'm attempting to communicate to them. And hopefully they will appreciate that. And I always make it available to them. And people have asked me to send them copies of my PowerPoints after the trip so that they can get a copy of it for their own review or edification later on. Fantastic, yes, PowerPoints. Uh, definitely complement, uh, at least the lectures that I've seen and heard, they complement uh, the lecture and the information. And then music, of course, is always a common thread through all of our trips. So, so I like to hear that as well. Our last question today, Nad, is uh, Cal Discovery's travel sets itself apart from other educational tours by connecting the excellence of Berkeley through distinguished faculty lecturers, such as yourself, <laughs> with the pleasure of travel to see some of the most iconic places in the world. Where are you looking forward to going the most as an enrichment lecture for Cal Discovery's travel and why? Well, first of all, I'm absolutely excited about the prospect of visiting Germany. Um, I was scheduled to go on a trip to Germany, which unfortunately I wasn't unable to do for a variety of reasons. So this is my opportunity to do so. And of course, on these beautiful riverboat trips, 
where you can stay in your room, relax, enjoy meals with the travelers, but also during the day stop and visit all the iconic and historical sites, like the one that's envisioned right behind you in the uh, image. Uh, and I'm hoping to give a couple of lectures that I hope will be interesting. One is in how Germany's subsequent history was changed by the death in the royal family of Germany in the middle of the 19th century, a story that people may not have heard before. And another is how the Prussians saved Europe in 1815 in the war against Napoleon. So I hope that these will be interesting stories. They'll focus on the history of Germany and Prussia, and we will be visiting these areas as we glide through the river and um, the Elbe River, and I hope that it will be of interest to folks. But there are other places I hope sometime in the future to visit. Um, I went to Northern Italy, magnificent. And then I took my family to Rome. Uh, I would love again to visit Rome. I would love to visit ancient Greece or modern Greece and see the sites of ancient Greece. Constantinople, um, the uh, beautiful um, Adriatic coast. There are just so many places that I would love to visit. And uh, I hope that in the future, if uh, those opportunities arise, I'll be able to join those trips and provide some interesting material uh, for the travelers. I wrote my master's dissertation on the first book of Plato's Republic. So I'm deeply uh, engaged in the history of the ancient world in the West. And I would love to share some of that knowledge if I can. Now, you said something very charming and very nice earlier, uh, calling me a distinguished lecturer. I defer to the tenured faculty in Berkeley, who I am fortunate to work with. You talk about Berkeley's excellence. That's where it resides, but there are just outstanding faculty who join these trips. And I feel just fortunate to be among their company. And um, I know that travelers are absolutely rewarded after taking our trips when they get to meet the faculty that sustain Berkeley's excellence across time and space from their time to our time. Oh, thank you so much, Nat. We really appreciate your support. And uh, I would just like to say, wrapping up here, that you've definitely been bit by the travel bug for many, many years, and it continues to go on. And um, so a big, big thank you from us at Cal Discoveries Travel for your time today and for letting us get to know you on a more personal level. Our hope is that despite the uncertain and ever-changing times, our interview has brought you, the traveler, into the exciting educational world of Cal Discoveries Travel. Please visit our website, alumni.berkeley.edu forward slash travel, where you can see our incredible 2021 program lineup and find a trip that is sure to say, pick me. And I and hope that uh... You will join us on the trip to the Elba River. It'll be a lovely version of, of travel that I think everyone can enjoy. And we hope that everything will work out that we can do so. And I just want to thank you know, Cal Discoveries for making it possible for not only me to participate in my family, who I've brought on every trip but one that I've taken, but also to provide our alumni, our friends, our visitors with an opportunity to not only see these magnificent places in the world, but to hear from people who are also engaged by them. Excellent. Thank you, Nat. And Ned's trip is scheduled for June 4th to the 15th in 2021. And I'd like to thank you again for joining us today. And so long for now, may you and your family stay healthy. <laughs>